I recently saw a news uh, program on TV that said that we are losing the war on drugs. How tragic. I, I mean, how can that be? What motivates a normally sensible person to consume a substance that's expensive, that's bad for them, and it's also against the law? Science has found that there are substances in many drugs that give you an intense feeling of euphoria, even thrill, by activating certain portions of the brain. With constant use, your body becomes sensitized and it requires more and more to get the same response. Thus, it becomes an expensive, life-altering addiction. Is the short-term pleasure really worth the long-term cost? Would it shock you to know that food cravings have been compared to drug addiction? That it has been discovered that both of these activities have the same neural pathways. Researchers at Duke University found that obese people looking at photos of food activated the same regions of the brain as addicted smokers did when they looked at photos of people smoking. Food cravings are different than real hunger. Hunger is controlled by the stomach. It's the body signaling that it's time to eat and get some nutrition to sustain life and function. True hunger is not very specific. In fact, just about anything will do because it's about survival. Food cravings are far more complex because they're run by the brain and the hormones. They may have nothing to do with hunger. It's just the mind looking for a fix of some happy juice. This obsession can be stronger than real hunger. Cravings are very particular and very focused. Let me give you an example. They crave thing, a particular flavor of ice cream or pancakes with maple syrup. These are called comfort foods because they have very little to do with hunger or, or nutrition. They just flood the brain with mood elevating happy hormones. We all know people who are chocoholics or big gulpaholics, but do you really know any broccoliaholics or carrotaholics? I don't know anyone who really craves celery unless it's filled with peanut butter or some kind of cheese spread. Cravings are influenced by gender, by your culture, and by past experience. Research has found that virtually 100% of females have cravings, and they crave more in the direction of sweets, whereas about 70% of males have cravings, and that's more in the direction of salt or savory flavored things. Experiences are really an important thing because you're not going to crave something that you haven't had before. Now, food cravings are triggered by different things like stress, anxiety, even boredom. And it's intensified by some modern marketing techniques. Have you ever found yourself standing in front of a, in fact, mindlessly standing in front of a uh, open refrigerator door at every commercial from a TV program that you're watching? It's not that you're really hungry, you're just looking for a fix like any other addict. How do you deal with these uh, emotional triggers? Doing it cold turkey is pretty brutal. Dealing with boredom is probably the easiest because all you have to do is get and stay busy. You just keep your mind engaged. Exercise and competition are particularly good because they help you maintain focus, but also as a byproduct you secrete the same feel-good hormones. There is a crave cycle or a craving cycle, and it goes like this. First of all, you'll experience the trigger. That will build the desire in you for a happy fix, and if you follow up on it, you'll have some pleasure even if it's just momentary. Once the pleasure subsides, then you're left with guilt. And of course, then you'll want to go back to a trigger, and the whole cycle repeats itself. Each time, it requires more of a fix to get the same pleasure. So you can break the cycle with healthy alternatives, substitutes, and with staying busy. So you can win the war on craving.